Hello family, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, welcome as well. To you guys that have been supporters, I thank you so much for all of your support. Love you guys so much. I always tell you that, but I'm, I really appreciate you. Um, but today is going to be a different video than the kind that I usually upload. Um, okay, you guys, the other day the Lord came to me in a dream. Well, he spoke to me in a dream. He didn't come to me. He spoke to me in a dream and it really shook me to my core. I mean, I was so afraid when I woke up. I mean, I was just crying and repentance, asking him to forgive me and to like just reveal everything to me so that I can get it right. You know? Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. The Lord has been giving me some very urgent messages that he wants me to make a video about. So first, I'm going to tell you all what the Lord is showing me, and then I'm going to dig into the dreams. So, Father, I just thank you for these messages that you are giving me, Lord. Think through my mind, speak through my mouth, Lord. Let it be all of you, none of me talking, Father. Open up the spiritual eyes and the spiritual ears of everyone on the other end that's listening, Father, so that they can be receptive to what it is that you're saying in this hour. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over everyone that's watching in Jesus name. So I Liberty. Yes, I'm back to back recording. Same outfit because we're going to be gone. And I have another dream, a prophetic dream that I had that I have to release because the Lord told me I need to release it uh, here in the next little bit. So I want to have it ready for you all. It's going to wreck you. It's going to be short and sweet. I know I've said that. You guys, here's the thing. I can work on it. Short and sweet. Okay. Here's the thing. I know they're not always short and sweet. But it's just how I roll. Okay? You guys are used to this by now. Okay? Okay. Here's the thing. God loves to bless me by encouraging me and, and giving me these little words and these tidbits, you know, of things that are going on in the glory that maybe I forget about or I don't narrator with AOC Network and God gave me a dream and if you have been a member of this channel um, you know I don't normally make these types of videos um, you know God spoke to me and gave me a dream and now I'm going to tell you about it I don't normally do that and one reason is because it doesn't normally happen I don't normally get dreams like what I'm about to share. It's happened before, like maybe on, like so once or twice, but nothing to this extent. One, huh? And so God gave me a dream unlike any I've had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Please get your authorized version of the scriptures commonly called the King James Version please follow me along word for word verse by verse at what we are going to be looking at today I, I'm, I'm sorry to subject you to that people believe that kind of stuff and those people that you just saw okay there they're up here. They're, they're making it. People are just gobbling that stuff up. We're going to be talking about dreams today. Visions, we're going to be making some references to visions, but we're going to deal with visions in another video. In this video, we're going to be specifically, we're, even, though, even though we're going to mention visions here uh, in this video, we're going to deal with visions in the next one. Today, we're going to be talking about dreams. Okay? But before we begin, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Check me out and what we're looking at, okay? Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. What is a fool? A fool is one who says in, their, in his heart, there is no God. Okay? What is the sacrifice of fools? For they consider not that they do evil, 
Okay? They don't hear, but they run and are willing to just blah, 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 blah. Be not rash with thy mouth. The inference is that the fool is rash with his mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Now, context, this is talking about vows, okay? Don't, don't vow, <laughs> okay? Because if you're going to vow, God's going to hold you to that vow. You look at Jephthah, okay? Jephthah. Perfect example of why not to vow, okay? But, for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Be not wrath, rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth, therefore let thy words be few. Now again, this is talking about vows, okay? Be careful about vowing. Because the Lord will hold you to it. Again, like I said, look at Jephthah. Okay? Jephthah, within the uh, book of, what is that, Judges? Okay? He was one of the judges. Okay? And he made a vow that the first thing that came across the threshold of his door of his house, he would offer it unto the Lord for a burnt offering. And the first thing that came out of his house was what? His daughter? Okay? You read the story of Jephthah. Okay, a lot of people like to dispute that uh, Jephthah didn't do as he said, but if he didn't do what he said, what he vowed, then the Lord would have no pleasure in him, and he would have punished Jephthah quite severely. You can look that up on your own time. But, be careful what you vow, but also be very careful about what you are saying the Lord gave you to say to people. Oh, oh, you've got to be very careful about that. Why? For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Multitude. Always busy. Always doing something. Hmm? Not taking actual time to just sit there and sit before the Lord Jesus Christ in his word and have him teach you through his word. Most of these people, like what you looked at, most of these people, they, they don't use the scriptures and if they use anything, they use a Bible, and hardly. And of course, they're not rightly dividing the word of truth. We'll get into that. But, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. Then it gets into verse 4, when thou vowest to vow. Okay? But also, too, let's go to James. Let's go to the book of James. James. <laughs> James. Chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 2. I take this one very seriously. Some of these people with these, which you saw, oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. James chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. And yet you get these people with the, I had a dream, I had a dream. These prophetic dream people. Some of the most craziest and mad nonsense that you will ever come across. But yet, people gobble this up. You know, also these dreams and visions about, you know, going to heaven or going to hell and stuff like that. Like I said, we're not going to be getting too deep into visions today at all. That will be in another video. We're sticking with dreams today, okay? But yes, these prophetic dream types and they're, they're, they're what you just saw was just not even the tip of the iceberg. You scroll down, you put in prophetic dream in your YouTube search. You're going to see a bunch of stuff like that. And you, and you know what the sad part is? You know what the real sad part is? A majority of them are female. And also, the majority seem to be Hamite. There was a Japhethian in there, of course. <laughs> Boy. 
you are, right? Praise the Lord for a godly wife. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I didn't tell my wife that I was starting to record. And she came in and was like, are you all right? Oh, praise the Lord for a godly wife. Uh, now, where were we? Let's read <laughs> James chapter 3, verses 1 and 2 again, okay? My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Okay? Now, again, the people that we looked at, they're not claiming to be masters, but that, that uh, young man at the end, uh, <laughs> you could hear me laughing in some of them because it's just so absurd. So, well, I don't normally get these, but, you know, and it's rare when it happens. So what? That means that he's an anointed one? Huh? Many will come in my name saying, uh, I am Christ. Anointed. Oh, you're special because God's showing you things that he's not showing even the most of the church of the living God. Let alone these Christians, right? Yeah. But like I said, a majority of these, and like I said, put prophetic word in your uh, YouTube search and just scroll down. You'll see a majority, not all, it's not all like this, but the majority are female. And also seem to be Hamite. Like I said, there was that one Japhethian uh, woman in there. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. God loves just to bless me. You pompous, wicked witch. Oh. People are eating this up. People are eating this up. Now, let's, let's, let's ask this question. Okay? Let's, let's ask this question. Is it possible today in this dispensation, is it possible that God can reveal something to you in a dream? Is it possible? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. If we were to say that it wasn't, uh, you got to be careful with that. But see, like that one young Hamite uh, man said, it doesn't happen that often. Um, actually, is it probable at all that God is going to reveal something to you in a dream? Hmm. God, is it possible that God could reveal to you something that's going to happen to you personally in that day? Like, for example, it's like, hey, Brad, you know, in a dream, I'm going to show you that you're going to run into so-and-so and this uh, some kind of person in this situation is going to happen. Is that possible? Is that possible? Is it probable? Is it probable? Most likely to happen? No. No. Is it possible? No. Is it possible? Is it possible that the Lord is going to reveal to someone something that is outside the already revealed scripture? No. No. Because that would make God a liar. And see what these people are doing. They are revealing things outside of Scripture. Okay? Because what is revealed for us is revealed for us in Scripture. Okay? There is no extra revelation coming outside of what is written. Okay? Now, on a personal, like I said, on a personal level, could you, could the Lord in the dream or something like that say to you, you're going to die tonight or you're going to die tomorrow, something like that. And then you wake up. First of all, you need to seek the Lord, whether or not that was from him. Okay. Is that possible? Is that possible? Is it probable? No. But is it possible? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. 
Yeah, it is. But there, see, when something like that were to happen, it's not something that you would go around boasting about to make everybody, hey, look at me, look at me, okay? All right? Remember, dear friends, what the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We will also touch on this in the video about visions, okay? Because you have to remember this, dear brethren. Dear brethren and dear friends, do not be deceived about this nonsense with dreams and visions and stuff like that. Do not be deceived, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Oh, verses 1 under verse 4. And by the way, the word visions here, this is the only time that it appears after Acts chapter 2 within the Pauline epistles. This is the only time. Visions in the Pauline epistles, doctrine for us today in this dispensation. Visions only appears once, and here it is. Like I said, we're going to touch more on this in the other video, but this has to be addressed right now. It is not expi uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 under verse 4. It is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. That's the only time that visions appears. Vision of any type within the Pauline epistles. Check me out on that. Okay? I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Paul is saying, was I there? Or did I just see something? I don't know. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Third heaven, okay? First heaven, the sky. Second heaven, the firmament. The third heaven, where God is. Three heavens, okay? First is the sky that you look at. Look at them blue skies with clouds. Okay, we got blue skies here. Second heaven, the firmament, okay? Or the dome that covers the earth. Third heaven. Did I say that the second heaven is the firmament? Third heaven, that's where God is. And you have people saying that they've been to see God. And then they're talking about it, making videos and making books. Verse 3. I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. He's just speaking of himself. Verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Paul went up to the third heaven, paradise, where God is. And he saw things and heard things. And he says, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So when you got someone saying, he went to heaven and saw Jesus, and comes back and wants to tell you all about it? Paul the Apostle, the greatest of the church of the living God, said, quote, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. They're lying to you. Some of these people are very sincere. Some of these people are actually very genuine in their sincerity. Yes, they are. They're genuinely wrong. They are sincerely wrong. Because if Paul the Apostle, the greatest of the church of the living God, our example today, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, even though Peter was the Apostle to the Jews, okay? But the greatest of any of the church of the living God went up to see the Lord. And Paul said how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. 
Well, he didn't say anything about what things he saw. Shut up. You see something, but yet unspeakable words? You're not supposed to... Paul wasn't allowed to speak about what he saw, okay? Okay? The things that he heard as well, okay? He saw things, okay? He Okay, visions and revelations. He saw things. He heard things. And he said it wasn't lawful for a man to utter. So when you get, again, when you get these people that go up to heaven or they go down to hell and they come back and willing to tell you all these nonsensical things that contradict the scripture. No. Okay? No. No. That's a lie. They're lying. They could be genuine. They could have actually, they might actually believe that they actually had this happen to them. They might have actually had, saw something. But who was the author of that? Something. We'll get on that towards the end of this video, okay? But dreams, dreams, these. And dreams, by the way, within the Pauline epistles does not appear. Dream, dreamers. Dreamers appears within after Acts chapter 2. After Acts chapter 2, you don't see much of dreams and visions. You don't see dreams, dreamer, dreamed, Within the Pauline epistles, you see dreamers in Jude. We're going to look at that. You see visions right here. We just looked at it, and you, we just read the context of it. After Acts chapter 2, and Acts chapter 2, verse 17 specifically, I think it is Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 17 specifically, we're going to look at it. They were quoting from the Old Testament, which these people that you just saw, they bank on that. But there's a problem with them, okay? There's a big problem with them. They're not saved. The people that you saw at the beginning of this video, okay? They're lost. They're deceiving people. The, those that you saw is what Jude talks about, these filthy dreamers. And we're going to look at that here. But dreams, okay? Dreams. Is it possible for you to receive something in a dream from the Lord pertaining to your actual life or something like that. I, I do believe that is possible. I, I'm going to go out and say, yes, I do believe that is possible. Okay. Is God going to, in a dream, reveal to you something that is outside of Scripture? No. No. I do believe it. Like I said, I do believe it is possible. That the Lord, like, for your, you know, the Lord could reveal to you, it's like, hey, today when you wake up, I'm going to orchestrate, or something's going, or you're going to see something, and you're, and you're sleeping, you know, and you see something, or something like that, and then it happens, okay? Who's the author of that? <laughs> you got to wonder if it goes outside of Scripture. <sighs> okay? Can God still do that today? Yes, He can. Is it? Probable that he will do that today. No, it is not. Meaning, most likely to happen. Hmm? Is it probable? No. Is it possible? Well, yes. But is it probable? No. Let's get to this. Go in your authorized version of the scriptures, please. Follow me along. This is important. Because what you are seeing, what you saw at the beginning of this video, besides the Calvinistic guys like uh, MacArthur, Voody, whatever, Voody, 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 whatever his name is, <laughs> Paul Washer, wow, 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 Paul Washer, wow. <laughs> I don't think that man is even secure in his own shoe size. But anyway. Go to Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 7. Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 7. Here's the very first appearance of the word dream in any uh, variation, okay? Genesis chapter, now we're not going to look at all of them, okay? We've got some selected things that we are going to look at, okay? Genesis chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 7. And Abraham... 
Abraham, not Abram. Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. Mm. Half sister, maybe, yes, but he shouldn't have said that. Okay. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night. And said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said she not unto me? Said he not unto me, she is my sister? And she, even she herself, said, He is my brother? In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. Now hold on right there. Here's Abimelech a heathen. Okay? This is before the law. But he's like, Lord, in the innocency of my heart have I done this. Okay? God's laws are written on man's hearts. Whether you want to admit that or not. Okay? Here's a pagan king. Abimelech. Or here's a, yeah. Here's a pagan, Abimelech, and even he got that. And what did God say? And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now look at this, verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. The very first appearance of the word prophet, right there too. And who is it associated with? Abraham. And Abraham, the word Hebrew, first appearance is associated with Abraham, or Abram, excuse me, one of the two, <laughs> same man, okay? Hebrew, prophet, okay? This is the first appearance of prophet, okay? Now check this out. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. So there's a dream. God came to Abimelech. It's like, hey, you got to be careful. Okay? You got to be careful. Now, can this still happen today? Is it possible that something similar to this could still happen today? I believe so. I do believe so, yes. Is it probable? No. But is it possible? Yes. I believe so. I believe so. Now, that's Abimelech. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Verses 10 on to verse 16. In Genesis, not 27, Brad. In Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 on to verse 16. Jacob's ladder. Now, Abimelech, God revealed, uh, told Be Abimelech, warned him, it's like, hey, you got another man's wife. Give her back to her husband, or I'm going to hurt you. And then Abimelech, as we saw, it's like, Lord, he said, he's like, I know. That's why I didn't let you do anything. Okay? See, that, that what we already looked at shows us, number one, the man, that the laws of God, and that was before the giving of the law, by the way, that the laws of God were written in men's hearts. Okay? Whether you want to accept that or not. Okay? That shows us that first. Okay? Number two, it also shows us how God can use dreams to warn people them personally. That was to Abimelech personally. It's like, if you don't do this, I'm going to mess you up. Okay? All right? It wasn't something that he went and shared with everybody. God spoke to me! Uh, no. It was like, you better do what I tell you or I'm going to drop you. Okay? But now, 
And, oh, and also, too, about the first mention of prophet, how it was linked unto Abraham, okay? Who would pray for him, okay? We've talked about that before. But Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 on to verse 16. Please follow me along. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. Now, this look at this verse right here. And behold, the Lord stood up above it, and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father. Okay? So, question. Question. Did Jacob see God? We, we, we know, and we're going to talk cover this in the other video, we know that, yes, Jacob did see God. He wrestled with God. Okay? Yes, he did. Okay? But he saw God. Doesn't say anything about him seeing his actual face, does it? But he saw, like, the countenance, the similitude, or whatever. But God revealed himself to him in a dream. Why? Future prophecy to come, which has been fulfilled, okay? Now, the totality of that fulfillment is not yet, but what has been, filled, been fulfilled in Israel and in our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? The total fulfillment, you know, the thousand-year reign when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back and rules and reigns in Jerusalem with us, okay? And then after the the uh, Satan is let loose for um, after the thousand years let loose and then Satan's annihilated and whatnot, okay? Then the fulfillment truly comes, okay? But, but, um, this has been fulfilled in part, you could say, in Israel, okay? And also in our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? But see, he was revealing to him in verse 13, what he will do, okay? What he will do. As today, in this dispensation, salvifically, it is finished. Okay? It is finished. All right? Verse 14, And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Absolutely. How? In our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Are all people blessed in Christ? Absolutely not. But no. What was fulfilled there was Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. He was sleeping. Okay? And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. Okay? So, the Lord, in a dream, revealed to Jacob things for the future that were to come to pass. Which today, number one, it was fulfilled in Israel. Okay? And number two, it has been fulfilled in our Lord Jesus Christ. But the complete fulfillment of it, the complete, the total fulfillment of it, will be when Satan, death, and hell are cast into the lake of fire. Okay? That's when, psh, you know, that'll be it. All right? Then the fulfillment of it, the totality, the total fulfillment of it. But... You know, it was fulfilled in Israel and in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? So that is how that has been fulfilled. But like I said, the total fulfillment of it will be yet future, okay? 
because, <laughs> okay, because, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, verse 14, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. That has happened. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. All the families of the earth. All of them. Has that happened yet? Will that happen? That will happen in the future. Yes. Yes. After the time of Jacob's trouble, the kingdom of heaven, and then into eternity. Yes. Yes. But has it happened today? No. No, it hasn't. The blessing is that you have the chance to get saved by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, by coming to him on his terms. Okay? But right there, future revelation of what God will do, which we have here in Scripture, been fulfilled. And we see the ultimate fulfillment of it within the book of Revelation. Okay? Okay? Now, go to Genesis chapter 31. Verses 1 on to verse 13, okay? So we see in Abimelech, God warns, warns Abimelech, Hey, that's somebody's wife. Give her back or I'm going to mess you up. Okay? Personal. And Abimelech's like, I, I, and the Lord's like, I know. Do what I say or I'm going to hurt you. Second one that we looked at, Jacob's Ladder. Future fulfillments of prophecy. Okay? Which which we have for us in scripture okay there are no new revelations outside of scripture as to what god is going to do prophetically that's what those guys that you looked at that you saw bloop, heret heretics heresy okay but like i said is it possible that god could do as he did with abimelech it's like hey you in a dream it's like hey you better give up that sin of yours or i'm gonna drop you Ugh. Oh, I do believe that is possible for a personal warning like it was for Abimelech. Yes, I do believe that is possible. Is it probable? No. No. Because uh, if you're saved, born again, converted in this dispensation, you have God living within you. So, dreams? If you have the Lord living within you and the spirit of truth and the Lord is that spirit, will guide you into all truth? Hmm. Hmm. Genesis chapter 31, verses 1 on to verse 13. And he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and, behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. So the Lord said unto him, Go back. Okay? And Jacob sent and called Rachel, and lay it to the field unto his flock. And he said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me. And ye know that with all my power I have served your father. And your father hath deceived me and changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. Uh, recompense upon Jacob for his uh, taking his brother by the heel and the way he was before. Um, and this is before he wrestled with God. Okay? Hmm. Consequences, remember? Okay? Verse 8. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. The God, thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of God came, spake unto me in a dream saying, Jacob, and I said, here am I. And look at this. And he said, lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle. All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled.
For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowedest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from that, this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. Now see, our Lord was fulfilling prophecy yet again, calling him back unto the land of his kindred, okay? Fulfilling prophecy. What he said unto Abraham, know that uh, surety that your seed will be uh, strangers in a land that's not theirs for 400 years, okay? And he also talked about the provisions that he was going to give to him. So this is all future prophecy, okay? Future prophecy. And the lambs, the rams that were ring, ring you know, that were ring straight speckled and grizzled were symbolic also, even though he actually did that to give him sustenance, okay? Still, future prophetic things that God will do will, will do and did do concerning this okay so fulfilled okay fulfilled all right now go to Genesis chapter 37 Genesis chapter 37 and he saw in a dream remember he saw in a dream not a vision. Visions and dreams are different. Things that are different are not the same. Okay? Now, Genesis chapter 31. Oh, we just looked at that. Genesis chapter 37. Verses 1 on to verse 10. Okay? Joseph. We all know about Joseph. Now, when it comes to certain things about dreams, for example, in the book of Daniel, with the dreams and visions of, of Nebuchadnezzar and stuff like that, we're not going to be looking at that in Daniel, simply because what Daniel does, what the Lord does through Daniel, excuse me, of interpreting in dreams and whatnot for Nebuchadnezzar and stuff like that, and the visions that he saw in the book of Daniel were prophetic, okay, which are fulfilled within the prophecy of Scripture in the book of Revelation, okay? Those things have not yet come to pass because those things are for the time of Jacob's trouble, a different dispensation. But we are going to be looking at this of Joseph because Joseph was able by God to interpret dreams. God interpreted dreams through Joseph. Okay, So hence, what Joseph does is also kind of what happened with Daniel. Hence, we do not need to look into Daniel for the purpose of dreams okay you understand that's so why we're not going to be looking at daniel all right because genesis chapter 37 verses 1 on verse 10 and jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of canaan these are the generations of jacob joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brethren and the lad was with the sons of bilha and with the sons of zilpha his father's wives and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Oh, whether we can go off on a many direction on that verse, but let's continue. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. They hated him yet the more. Should Joseph have been quiet? Let's read. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream, which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. In the final chapter of Genesis, Genesis chapter 50, Joseph reveals unto his brethren, it's like, hey, you thought to do me evil, but God sent me before uh, ahead of you for good to give you um, to give you sustenance and stuff like that. So should have Joseph been quiet? No, God had a purpose 
with this. God has a purpose with all of what he did. But obviously, future prophecy about everyone bowing, the, his brethren bowing down to Joseph, they did that. And also, this is, uh, this is in type how everyone is going to bow to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? In type with that. But as far as his brethren and his mother and father, or his father, excuse me, coming down and making obeisance unto him, that happened. That was fulfilled in Genesis here. Yes, it was. But then again, like I said, in type, an even greater fulfillment in our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. The eleven stars, his brethren, okay? And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother... And thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to the, to the earth. And I ask you, is that not what happened? It is. It is what happened. And again, in type, our Lord Jesus Christ, that every knee shall bow and every knee shall confess. Okay? But while we're here, let's look at verse 20. Okay. The brethren, his brethren and stuff like that, who hated him because of his dreams, look what they did to him for. It. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, and we will say, some evil beast hath devoured him. And we will see what will become of his dreams. And we will see what will become of his dreams. So right there you see, so right there here that we have looked at, okay, we see, and Abimelech, he was warning Abimelech of something that he had done, okay? That I do believe, you know, like I said, you could be asleep as the church of the living God, okay? As the church of the living God. You could be doing something uh, and the Lord be like, hey, you better stop. I'm going to drop you, Okay? Okay, I believe that is possible for today. Probable? No. Because the spirit of truth who will guide you into all truth will guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word, scripture, is truth. Okay? Our Lord shouldn't have to deal with those of his own with dreams. Okay? Shouldn't have to. Okay? That's why it's not probable. And with the, the lost people... I'm, yeah, they're getting dreams, but who's the little G-God of this world? Hmm? Hmm? Okay. Now, go to Genesis chapter 40. Now, of course, again, future prophecy. Future prophecy. All right? Okay. Joseph, in his dreams, telling his brethren and even his father, hey, hey. Basically, I, I'm going to go down to Egypt. He doesn't say it like that. But I'm going to go down to Egypt. Pharaoh is going to make me second in command. And y'all going to come down to me. That was fulfilled, okay? Future prophecy. And it's fulfillment. And again, the ultimate fulfillment comes with our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? But now let's look at this in Genesis chapter 40, verses 1 on to verse 8. Genesis chapter 40, verses 1 on to verse 8. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain and the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued in season and they continued a season in ward. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream, in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. 
And Joseph came in unto them in the morning, and looked upon them. And behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto, them, unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. A clue. A clue. Do not interpretations belong to God? Okay. Now we see this interpretations of dreams. Okay. Daniel interpreting the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar. But see, do not interpretations belong to God? Like I told you, this is not why we're going. This is not why we're uh, we're not going to be looking in the book of Daniel. Okay. Because King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, and Daniel interpreted them for future prophecy. Okay, and these guys, okay, him, you know, the, the, they both had their dreams. One got killed and the one was restored again, okay? Also a type of prophecy, okay? But why we looked at this? Because if you have a dream and you think it is from the Lord, unto the Lord belongs the interpretation of that dream. And does your dream coincide with scripture or go against scripture if your dream goes against scripture guess what dear friend it's not of god if your dream that you have is not in the uh, not in the way of rightly dividing the word of truth Meaning that in your dream, God revealed to you that, I'm going to use Christian jargon here, um, that God revealed to you the rapture. <laughs> or God revealed to you how Trump is going to be the Cyrus or, or something like nonsense like that. No. No. That's not from God. That's from Satan. In a dream. God showed you heaven or hell? No. 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 All that you need as far as revealed for us is right here in Scripture, the authorized version. Our Lord Jesus Christ does not need nor will go outside of his word because if he did that, that would, number one, make the scriptures contradict, and that would prove him a liar now, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the people that you looked at think that they are Old Testament prophets. See, number one, they're lost. They're not saved. Number two, they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Interpretations belong unto God. And if you, okay, you might say, well, Brad, I, I know, I know the Lord showed me this in a dream search the scriptures daily whether these things be so rightly divide the word of truth okay if you're getting an interpretation for your dream that you got and it's out of the old testament under the law uh, i'm going to tell you 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 probably you've been deceived okay you've been deceived have you in a dream seen something like, okay, well, the Lord said, hey, I better, I better stop messing around with this sin and get back on track with him. That's more probable than the Lord revealing to you something that is outside of Scripture. That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. Okay? Because, see, the four people that you looked at before this video, what are they doing? They're working in what? Signs and wonders. And who requires a sign? And who seeks after wisdom? The Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Okay? Hence, replacement. Like that, that, that theater, a uh, young Hamite man who... Uh, Who's like, well, this doesn't normally... Oh, doesn't normally... Oh, so you're a special anointed one, huh? Oh, 
maybe like a replacement? Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's go to the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. I do, I do personally believe that, as with Abimelech, the Lord can warn you, Church of the Living God, and maybe even you lost people because of Abimelech, yes, but see, that was before the law, that was a different dispensation, okay? Because remember what did our Lord say to those uh, Pharisees and Sadducees, okay? They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear him, okay? That was Brad Eyes, okay? See, this, this is the foundation, the scripture, okay? Jesus Christ is our foundation, yes. And Jesus Christ speaks to us through the scripture. Absolutely, absolutely. You are to check everything out with scripture. You are supposed to rightly divide the scripture, the word of truth, okay? And guess what? If whatever you think you have dreamed, okay, and you think it's from God, and it totally contradicts the doctrine for today in this dispensation. Dear friend, you didn't get that from God. That's not from God. God's not going to reveal to you, to anyone, things outside of Scripture as concerning prophecy, because we have the completed canon of Scripture. No! No! He's not going to do that. Why? Because he would be a liar and he would be contradicting his word. It doesn't happen like that. Okay? Those four people that we saw at the beginning of this video, you tell them I told them, said so. They're liars. They're heretics. They're lost. And they're deceiving people who want to have their ears tickled. Okay? Now, Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9, okay? Numbers chapter 13, verses 1 on to verse 9. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. <coughs> oh, excuse me. 12. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm reading that. It's like, oh, I, I, I thought that. <laughs> Numbers chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 9. Beg your pardon, brethren. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Now these false prophets will come to something like this to defend themselves. But hold on, okay? Well, let's, let's continue. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. Now those of you of the Church of the Living God, you know what's going on here. But remember, there are those who are not of us who watch. So let's continue, okay? My servant Moses is not so. Oh, you have spoken against the anointed of the Lord. Shh, shut up, let's continue. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And in the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And again the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. Now, 
Every one of them false prophets that we saw at the beginning of this video, they will come to something like this to defend themselves. Okay? What's going on here? Okay? What's going on here? Okay? This was under the law. The law had been given. Okay? The law had been given. This is under the law. This is a dispensation where eternal security, the seal of the Holy Ghost, was not there. We're going to get into this here in a little bit, okay? But this was a different dispensation. The permanent seal of the Holy Ghost was not there. The Holy Ghost, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, could come and go, could come and go. Eternal security was not there, okay? We of the Church of the Living God today, everyone who is saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus, has God living within them. We are sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? In this dispensation, the dispensation of the law, that was not there. Okay? 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 That's what's going on. So, yes. 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 Like, like right there. Okay, verse 6. Okay? And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, a prophet. What is a prophet? Today, today, someone who prophesies. Someone who is first saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. This is what 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 6 deals with. Okay, Someone who is of the church of the living God, who is saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Number one, has the Lord within them is sealed until the day of redemption. The Lord within that person, a person is a spirit, soul, and body. The Lord that is within that person will speak through the scriptures to that person. Hence, prophesying. That is prophesying today. Someone who is saved, speaking the scriptures unto you from the Lord that is within them. Okay? Because the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. Okay? So, someone who prophesies today. Someone who is saved, sealed with the Holy Ghost, and speaking to you through the scriptures, through the Holy Ghost. You know, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay? That is prophesying today. Okay? Why? Because the believer in Christ Jesus, who is truly saved, born again, converted, is sealed until the day of redemption. You have God living within you. Okay? God is not dealing with people today as he dealt with them within the Old Testament. Okay? Like I said, within the Old Testament here, the Holy Ghost, the permanent, once saved, always saved, yes, seal of the Holy Ghost was not there. So our Lord was working through what? Prophets. Okay? But, but before we get to what is a prophet, a really good definition of it, uh, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 13. Okay? And herein, herein, lies what we looked at at the beginning of this video, okay? Herein lies what we were looking at at the beginning of this video. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 under verse 5, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 under verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a Dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign and the wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Ah. See, what those four are doing. Uh, they're trying to pass off to you that they are prophets as in the Old Testament. Old Testament prophets, the law and the prophets prophesied, genius, prophesied until John. John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets. Okay? But according to these people, like the four that you looked at, 
that, hey, God's prophets, such as in the Old Testament, are all over. No. 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 God will prophesy through his body, the church of God, the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus who have the seal of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit within them. And the Lord that is within that person, spiritual and body, will guide you into all truth through the scripture and speak to you through the scripture. That's prophesying today. Like I told you, that's what 1 John, verse, uh, 1 John 4, verses 1 on to verse 6 deals with. Okay? Okay? But see, you got these false prophets. And that, that stuff, that prophetic word nonsense, is rife today. Because that's what people want. They want the so-called supernatural. But they want the God of the scriptures not to be involved. So then what happens? Satan, who himself is disguised, uh, excuse me, transformed as an angel of light, is more than happy to oblige. Because see right here? Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them. See, those four false prophets, they want you to pay attention to them. To go after other gods. Okay? Not after the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, does not operate in the way that those four people are trying to demonstrate to you. They are doing the works of their father, the devil. Don't be deceived by that. Okay? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Prove it you. God knows what you're going to do. Okay? Who is he? It says, prove it you. Not proving him, yourself to him. It says that he proveth you. That you may know that in your own little heart, you're not as good as you think you are. You're not as righteous as you think you are. You're not as sanctified as you think you are. Okay? He's doing this not to prove it, to show him anything. God knows everything, okay? God knows everything. God knows what's going to happen. We don't, okay? So, for the Lord your God proveth you, whether you, to know whether ye, plural, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So, Satan will be allowed to come in with a false prophet and to see whether or not you examine yourself and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay? All right? And Satan, of course, to, you know, the suspension of disbelief has been given power to let some of the stuff that he says to his false prophets happen to deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay? The proveth you, ye, plural, more than one person, is that to prove to yourself whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Not that God needs proof of anything. God knows what's going to happen because like it says in the New Testament, Jesus knows what's in the hearts of all men. He knows all men. He knows that we're wicked. Proveth you is to you, you yourself, Personally. Verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. <laughs> and that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, I have dreamed, I have dreamed, shall be put to death. Now, we don't, that, we don't do that today. No, absolutely not. No, the, the Lord is the one. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The Lord is the one that will avenge himself on these false prophets that have uh, deceived these people by their lies. Okay? Okay? But see, this shows you how serious God takes the heresy of what those four individuals that you saw at the beginning of this video are doing. How serious it is. 
And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Okay? Okay? And remember, like we looked at in Numbers chapter 12. 12. Okay? Like we looked at in Numbers chapter 12. Okay? Absolutely. This is how it was under the dispensation of the law. The seal of the Holy Ghost was not there. The Lord had not made the perfect atonement for sin yet. Okay? That didn't happen until the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the New Testament people began in Hebrew when, uh, with the death of the testator. You read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 on to 18. Go look that up. That's when the New Testament began. Before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, doctrinally, it was still the Old Testament. And the Holy Ghost had not been given yet. Okay? Okay? So when you got these heretics who will come to um, verse 6 to defend themselves and say, Hey, you're speaking against the Lord that's anointed. No. No. You're taking things out of a different dispensation and trying to apply them today. That, my friend, is heresy. And that, my friend, is the basis of all problems with this thing called Christianity. Not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? But see, they'll come to verse 6 in Numbers chapter 12 and say, He said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. And then those heretics is like, You have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you don't find that anywhere in Scripture. Blaspheme, like you have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. You don't find that after our Lord has said that. You don't in Acts chapter two. Okay, in Acts chapter two, does Peter say you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost? No. Did Paul ever say you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost? No. Who said I talked about blaspheming the Holy Ghost? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The unpardonable sin. I'll be sure to link that uh, in the description box for you where we talk about that, okay? After our Lord said that, you don't, you will not find anywhere after our Lord said that in Scripture about you blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You don't see Peter talking, you don't see Peter say it, you don't see Paul say it, you only see our Lord Jesus Christ say it. And after he said it, you will not find it anywhere in Scripture. Hmm? You will not find anywhere in Scripture someone saying, You have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. You will not find that. Okay? You won't. Because the only way one could blaspheme the Holy Ghost is when Jesus Christ is physically present. Okay? We talk about that in the unpardonable sin video. Okay? Okay? See what I mean? Our Lord saw, said that, yes. But after that, and especially in this dispensation, Acts chapter 2, Peter did not say you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. Paul never said you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. No one. Our Lord is the only one who says that. And it is only applicable when he is physically present on the earth. When he himself is physically present on the earth. Okay? So, but what is a prophet? Like I told you, today in this dispensation, someone who prophesies, okay? A prophet, you could say, today is a preacher. You could say that, even though a prophet and a preacher are two totally different things, okay? They are, okay? But Old Testament prophets do not exist today. One prophesies, as we have already discussed. But what was an Old Testament prophet? Let me show you. Very good definition of it. Go to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 5. Elisha. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 5. 
and Elijah the Tishbite, who was a, of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Now stop. Verse 1. As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand. Stand before him. Today in this dispensation, God is within us. Okay? He lives within us. Okay? I will dwell in them and be in them. Okay? But Elisha says, As the Lord of God liveth before whom I stand. Abraham, the first one attributed to prophet, according to scripture, okay, would pray for Abimelech. He stood before the Lord. Okay? All right? So an Old Testament prophet was someone who stood before the Lord, was used as his mouthpiece. And see, today in this dispensation, you have the Lord within you. If you are truly saved, born again, converted, those four at the beginning, they are not. That one Japhethian woman, God loves to bless me and give me you. The Lord rebuke you, you wicked witch. And that, that young Hamite man. <laughs> this doesn't happen that often. It's really well. Well, ain't you just an anointed one, huh? Give me a break. Give me a break. Let's, let, let's continue, though. Okay? And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Kirith. That it be that it is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens, an unclean bird, to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Kirith, that is before Jordan. So he stood before the Lord as an Old Testament prophet, because remember, in this dispensation, the Holy Ghost was not a permanent uh, permanent resident. He could come and go, come and go, come and go. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Which way did the Spirit of the Lord depart from me to go unto thee? Okay? Take not thy holy... People! Okay, people. There are no Elijahs today. There are no Old Testament prophets today. Those four at the beginning of this video, they are trying to tell you that they are Elijah's Old Testament prophets. Heresy! No. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay? 1 Kings chapter 18, one verse. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 15, one verse. One verse. Again, Elisha says it again. Okay? Uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 15. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely shew myself unto him today. Okay? Now, this is a definition of what a prophet, an Old Testament prophet was. The prophet, the, the minor prophets, uh, and also the major prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Okay? They were the Lord's mouthpiece unto his people. Okay? All right? Today in this dispensation, you are saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus. You have the Lord permanently within you. Okay? It doesn't work like it uh, did back here. Okay? Yes, these were anointed men, you could say. Yes, these were special men. Yes! Yes! Because the Holy Ghost was not given commonly among men, among those who would believe. Okay? Okay? The Holy Ghost could come and go. Today in this dispensation, you come to the Lord on His terms, you're sealed, once saved, always saved. These people are liars, brethren. People, they are lying to you. Do not believe them. They're nonsensical dreams. And like we look, hey, if the, if the dream come to pass, the Lord is proving you whether or not you search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Whether you're examining yourselves, whether you are in the faith. And you really ought to consider, dear friend, if you're calling yourself one of these Christians, 
and you're falling in line with that and you're gobbling that stuff up, you better get, number one, throw away about your Bibles and get the scriptures, the authorized version called the King James Version, and you need to examine yourself heavily, boy, girl, whether or not you're truly saved. Now, this is also echoed again, okay, in 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. Elisha, the successor of Elijah. Elisha, okay? 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Elisha, not Elijah, Elisha says the same thing that Elijah said. 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 15. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, Surely, were it not that I regarded the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the, the minstrel pray, played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. See that coming and going, coming and going thing. Okay? Okay? And that, you see this. Uh, what was it? Uh, I was not, not a prophet. But I, I, I believe it was Amos. I, I believe it was. Uh, 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 Brother Sasha will correct me on this. Uh, we'll put it in the description box, uh, in the comment section. But he said, I was not a prophet, but a follower of, of her. I was a herdman, a, a picker of sycamore fruit, okay? But then the Lord called them. It's like, go and preach. Just like um, uh, Jonah, okay? He was the Lord's mouthpiece unto the Ninevites. He stood before the Lord, speaking to the people, okay? This, what we're looking at, is a good de scriptural definition of what an Old prophet, uh, Old Testament prophet was, okay? You want a definition of what prophesying in this dispensation is like, okay? We'll look at that here in a little bit, okay? But now go to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 16, just one verse. Just one verse, okay? Verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 16. But he said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So there again we see Elisha saying, But he said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand. Okay? That is because... Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Lord was not a permanent resident in anybody in this dispensation. Eternal security was not there. It was faith and works in this dispensation. In the dispensation we have today, it is by His grace through our faith. Okay? Two totally different dispensations. And the people that we looked at at the beginning of this video, they're lying to you. They think that they, they want you to think that they are these Old Testament prophets. Nonsense. 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 Okay? Nonsense. And then you can read about in Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 28, about King Saul. How the Lord didn't answer him through uh, prophets or Urim or by dreams. Okay, let's, let's look at that. Okay, go to 1 Samuel chapter 28, okay? You have to rightly divide the word of truth, people. If you don't rightly divide the word of truth, you're going to fall for devils like that. There are no Old Testament prophets today. Yes, I do believe. I do believe that God, with like as with Abimelech, God can warn you of something like that. Yes, I do believe that is possible. But prophetic... Future revelations of things that are contrary to Scripture. Are you nuts? The future, the prophetic future has already been revealed. It's in Scripture. No exact names and faces we don't know. But we know the future because it has, it has written. It has written. It has written. But see, the ignorance of God's Word, the Scriptures... Is one, is one of Satan's greatest weapons. 
And he does that through the Bibles. And people wanting to have an experience rather than a conversion. Hence, Satan is willing to give you people those four. four and that's, that ain't even the, the, the tip of the iceberg, brethren. People. Okay? But uh, let's look at this. In 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 6 and 7. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. There's a reason for that. We're going to look at that. Okay? But, look at verse 7 here. Okay? So the Lord wasn't answering him. He knew why. But, for our instruction in righteousness, okay, uh, the Lord has closed the book on you. Okay? Okay? You're out of fellowship with the Lord. You need to spend the day fasting. I recommend fasting, you know, so you can put all your attention to our Lord Jesus Christ. Get your nose in the scriptures. Get your nose in prayer. Show me my wrong. Show me what I've done. Uh, Lord, reveal what I have done. What's wrong with me. Show me my... That's a tough prayer to pray. It's a tough thing to look into the scripture. But the end result thereof will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness, dear friend. Okay? What did Saul do? Verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, which, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Familiar spirit. So in other words, go to the devil's. When God isn't answering you, ah, go to the devils. And hey, the devils are right there to answer you there. Right? But now, let's skip ahead to verses 15 on to verse 19. This woman was a fraud. And the Lord allowed something to happen. And it freaked her out. Okay? Uh, you let's, let's read about, uh, let's read, uh, let's see. Let's read from verses 12 on to verse 19 in 1 Samuel chapter 28, okay? This woman was a fraud, okay? Just like the four that we looked at at the beginning of this video, just like all these charismatic Pentecostals, okay? There are some who are Pentecostals who are sincere and genuine. You got to get out of that system there, brother. It's heresy. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? But you got these charismatics, Okay? They're frauds. They're charlatans. Okay? But, as this woman was a fraud and a charlatan, okay, she asked Saul, you know, who shall I bring up? He's like, bring up Samuel. And she probably had a prepared kind of, you know, theater, you know, suspension of disbelief kind of thing to go on. But, check this out. Okay? And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. Like, ah! Because she wasn't expecting that. Okay? She wasn't expecting that. Satan didn't do this. God forbid. No. No. Because we're going to see this. Okay? Check this out. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid. For what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Little g. Okay? Ascending, going up, out of the earth. Okay? I believe God gave this witch a dose of reality for this exact purpose. Satan did not do this. See, today, people who don't want to go to the Lord, but would rather go to a devil, the devil, with those like those four and all the people that you see on TV, okay, the devil is right there to provide you all the things to itch your ear. Okay? Saul went to this witch. And this witch, like I said, probably had a spiel or something prepared to deceive people. But the Lord allowed this to happen for a reason. Let's keep reading. Okay? Verse 14. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed herself. And bowed himself, excuse me. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? 
we can go off on a totally different area, a little wabbit on that, but um, brought me up. You know, and what is that? In uh, Luke chapter 16, I think it is, where it talks about Abraham's bosom and hell, the people who are in hell, there's a dividing line that they cannot pass to, uh, pass that and one cannot. Uh, so if, if someone goes to hell, you're not getting out of it. So when someone claims to have died and go to hell and then come back, No. No. Genuine. Sincere. Genuinely and sincerely wrong. No. That contradicts scripture. I don't care how nice, sincere, or believable they are. The devils can speak truth, remember? Because sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Yes, they can. They can be sincere. Absolutely, they could be sincere. But see, if someone says that they've been to heaven, come back down, and then write a book about it, or gone to hell, you know, died, gone to hell, then come back. People, that, that, that's contrary to scripture. No, that, no, that doesn't happen. No, is that possible? No! That would contradict the scripture. I'm sure those people who say that thing, those things, truly believe that they have seen or dreamt what they dreamt, and they truly believe in their hearts that it's from the Lord. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay? No, it is not. Well, what about this? Check this out. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? See, the perfect sacrifice for sins was not yet made. So they went down to Abraham's bosom. Okay? Which is what? In the earth. That's why he was called up, not called down. Okay? He was brought up because Samuel was in Abraham's bosom, while others, like Saul, you know, going to be down in the earth. Down in the earth. Why? Because the way to heaven was not yet opened. Okay? Okay? The perfect sacrifice for sins wasn't there made yet. Okay? So, let's continue. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me. And answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore have I called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee, and is become thine enemy? And the Lord hath done to him, as he spake by me. For the Lord hath rent the kingdom out of thine hand, and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyedest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. That's the reason why. That's the reason why God wasn't answering Saul. And that's the reason why Saul said, okay, you're not going to answer me. I'm going to go to the devils. Okay? And a familiar spirit that's not of the Lord. But see, the Lord was involved in this, I believe, to let Sam to let Saul know this. Because the woman freaked out because she was a fraud. And then all of a sudden, the Lord allowed it to happen. Satan didn't have anything to do with this. Absolutely not. No. 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 And what was the revelation here? Verse 19, Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Meaning, down in the earth. Okay? You read, in, what, what, what is that? In Luke chapter 16, the division, one was in the Abraham's bosom, the other one was in torments. Okay? Okay? Two different places within the earth. Okay? Okay? Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. 
The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Okay? So, that's just, we looked at that because, okay, the Lord departed from Saul, and he was king. The Lord departed from Saul. Didn't answer him from dreams. And because of that, he decided to go unto one that had a familiar spirit. And you read up about familiar spirits in the scripture. Um, the Lord abhors that. And that's what his king went to go do. Hmm? Very interesting. Very interesting. And then, of course, King Solomon. The Lord appeared to him in a dream. And said, ask me what I shall give thee. And see, you got some of these heretics said that say, God appeared to me in a dream and said, ask me what I'll get, as if they were King Solomon. Doesn't work that way anymore, people. It doesn't work that way anymore. Okay? Now go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Like I said, I, I, I am seeing way too much of this nonsense. And <laughs> my best friend, our best friend, <laughs> has this knack of finding these things. And um, he shares them with me. It's like, oh, boy, they just ludicrous, ludicrous. And like I said, not all, but the majority of them are female. And not all, but the majority of them seem to be Hamite. Why is that? Why is that? Why is that? Go to Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 25 on to verse 32. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 25 on to verse 32. Remember, this is under a different dispensation. Okay? I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Okay, remember, in front of the Lord of whom, and before the Lord, uh, instead of butchering that, okay, let me go get the right quotation for that, because I know it grieves my dear young uh, brother. <laughs> I know it does. He's offering, it's like, Brad, he's like, I know, brother. <laughs> uh, First Kings chapter 17, uh, when he says, um, and verse 1, And Elijah the Tishpite, Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord, uh, Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, before whom I stand, before the Lord God of Israel, before whom I stand. Good definition of an Old Testament prophet. Remember that, okay? Now, Jeremiah 23, verses 25 on to verse 32. I have heard what the prophet said. The prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Like that, that young man. He's, oh, this doesn't happen. He wants to be, and then he wants to be up here. They, they, all of them are arrogant, pompous devils. Want to have everyone look at me. And that's, that's a trait of the devils. Okay? Okay? They want people to look at them. They run. The false prophets run to be in the limelight. Hey, look at me. Look at me. And they make video, 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 video after attacking people. So people will look at them. Okay. That's the trait of a false prophet. Okay. I don't. I, you come to this video. It's because the Lord guided you. Okay. Not because of advertising or putting it out there. No. You see this, the Lord led you to it. Okay? How long, verse 26, How long shall it be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal, the prophet that hath a dream. Let him tell a dream. Go ahead. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. You're gonna you're gonna have hell to pay, okay? And he 
that hath my word. Let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, wheat where you get bread? The bread of life. Okay? Seth the Lord. Is not my word like as a fire? Seth the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Oh, you know where we're going now, don't you? Don't you? Yeah, you, you but you ought to know. You ought to know. <laughs> hey, you false prophets, huh? Is the Lord revealed to you in a dream where we're going right now? You despicable, wicked devils. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Uh, let's let's read that in uh, Jeremiah twenty three verse twenty nine. Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Hebrews chapter four verse twelve. For the word of God, the Scriptures, is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. Joints and marrow are significant to what? A body. So the person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. You have the soul, you have spirit, and joints and marrow of a body. Okay? So the whole person. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Like it says in Acts chapter 17. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Excuse me. In that they searched... That in that they received the word of God readily and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Those, those, those four nincompoops that we saw at the beginning of this, okay, if that, okay, okay, let's say, just let's, let's dream a little, okay? Let's say they were real life prophets, impossible. Uh, Old Testament prophet, what, no. But let's say, let's, okay, let's go with me. Let's say they would. They would have themselves an authorized version of the scriptures saying, turn here, turn here. See that? See that? Oh, compare that? See? See? They would be doing something like that. Are they doing that? Oh, some, some will read, and hardly any of them use the scriptures, but some will do. They'll just use a little portion. They'll, they'll read like, five verses in a, in a so-called sermon, and they'll go off for 20 hours about how God revealed this, God revealed this, blah, 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 full of sound and fury signifying nothing. First, uh, back in Jeremiah chapter 23, picking up at verse 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my views, excuse me, <laughs> that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. They're thieves, these false prophets. They're thieves. They're saying the Lord saith, and he hath said nothing to these people. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith, behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them and cause my pe people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore shall they not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 8 and 9. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 8 and 9. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams, which ye caused to be dreamed. Ah, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business. Do you know 
that if you see something, the way the mind works, that can influence your dream. You hear something in your sleep or something, or you heard something that day, it can influence your dreams. You know, because of the wickedness of your own heart, you can influence your own dreams. That's a very telling verse right there. You might want your dream to be real. You might want your dream to be of the Lord. But guess what, cousin? I can guarantee you almost 110% it ain't. Like I said, the only one that I, I, I think is possible is like similar to uh, Bemelech. Like, hey... You better give up your life of sin before it's too late or I'm going to drop you. Like I said, I believe that is possible. Probable? They have, they have the scriptures. If they don't have, ever hear the scriptures, okay? But is that possible? As with Abimelech like we looked at, I do believe that is possible. Probable? No. Possible? Yes. I do believe that is possible. But like what you are, you, we saw at the beginning of this video, absolutely not. That's not going to happen. Or else God would be a liar. And again, verses 8 and 9 here in Jer Jeremiah 29. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, said the Lord. Okay. And go back to Jeremiah 23. Now let's read verses 21 and 22. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Again, the telltale sign of a false prophet. They run to the forefront uh, like that one Japhethian witch. The Lord just loves to bless me with giving me this nonsense. She run. She ran to be to the, to the forefront like faithful servants of Antichrist. All these videos. He runs to make all these videos. Telltale sign of a false prophet wanting to be, look at me, look at me, everybody, look at me, the prophet of the hour. When someone of the church of the living God, you know, when you are bid to a feast, don't take the upper room. No, but these people, those guys like that, the first four that we saw here in this video, okay? I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. You look at the sub subscribers of these people. Their views, some of them were started this year. They have thousands and already in the millions of views. People want to have their ears tickled. Speak unto us smooth things. So Satan will rise up these false prophets to give you what you want. Why? Because you love not the truth. Therefore God will send you a strong delusion. Careful. Like I said, that's the tale, uh, that's the uh, really good sign of a false prophet. They run. They want to be in the forefront. Oh, I had a dream. I'm going to reveal to you a prophecy. Shut your mouth. God didn't reveal anything to you. Satan did. Verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel uh, before the Lord of hosts, before whom I stand. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words. No, they want them to hear their own words. If someone come in his own name, him you will receive, right? Right, right. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Oh, they talk about repentance? Oh, yeah, sure they do. Yeah, in the pre pre premise of a lie, them being false prophets. 
Come on now, people. Come on now, people. Go to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. The New Testament. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. Now, this is the New Testament. This is in the collection of the books referred to as the New Testament. This is scripture. But this is the birth of Jesus Christ. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. This is doctrinally before uh, this is doctrinally before the New Testament. This is doctrinally the Old Testament. They are still under the law. Okay? Read Hebrews chapter... Hebrews chapter 9. <laughs> you are to study? Study. The Bibles don't tell you to study. The scriptures tell you to study. Okay? Study to show thyself approved unto God. That you be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Those four devils ain't rightly dividing the word of truth. Why? Because they want to exalt themselves. They want to They run to be a look at me, look at me, to glorify themselves and their father Satan. Okay? They're taking things from another dispensation and trying to apply them to today. Hebrews chapter 9. Pay attention. Verses 11 on to verse 18. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Okay? Don't go to church buildings. Stay away from them satanic, pagan buildings. Okay? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, Catholic, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, yes, Christ Jesus never sinned and he was never a sinner. I never said that he was. Never said that at all, okay? God cannot sin. Jesus never sinned, nor was he a sinner, okay? Thank you very much, okay? Who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of birth, don't look at me, Look at that scripture verse right there. By means of what? Death. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. In similar fashion, Moses died before they went over into the promised land. Our Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again, third day according to the scriptures, bringing in the New Testament. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Verse 17. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Blood. Okay? For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Dear friend. Okay? And see, you got heretics out there who want to celebrate the birth of Christ when in reality we are told the opposite. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body. This is my blood that is shed for the remission of your sins, which is broken for you. Okay. Do this in remembrance of me. We are to remember his death. Okay. We are to commemorate his death, not his birth. Why? Because when people 
seek to commemorate they, their birth, they yoke themselves up with Catholicism and they make it an idol. When we're told in Scripture the opposite, we're to commemorate his death, not his birth. Why? Look at what people, how they make his birth an idol. And we don't really know when his birth was. We can, apparently, have a kind of good guesstimate of when his death did occur because of Roman records. Okay? We don't, I mean, we don't really truly know. Scripture is not specific, so that's good enough for us. But uh, we don't know when Christ was really born. It wasn't in December! You wicked heretics! But, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this way. Oh yeah. Oh, I get emotional about that? <laughs> Look in the mirror, Jack. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But when he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, appeared to him in a dream, appeared unto him in a dream. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? This is doctrinally still under the law in the Old Testament. Doctrinally. Because we just looked at Hebrews chapter 9. It's the death of the testator. The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Okay? But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. He shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call, and she, <laughs> excuse me, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Read the next verse. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, revealing, revealing prophecy, fulfilling prophecy. Do you see that? Do you see that? Okay. Do you see that? Do you see that? Okay. Why? Okay. Revealed to Joseph in a dream. Okay. Now all this was done, verse 22, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Jehovah saves. Jesus. Okay? Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So see, right there, revealed unto him in a dream. Why? To fulfill prophecy. Okay? Okay. And uh, now let's go to chapter 2 in Matthew, verses 12 on to verse 23. Oh, that was right across the page. Verses 12 on to verse 23. Okay? The close of the chapter. Now, the wise men. Was it three? I don't know. We assume it's three because there are three gifts, but we do not know the specific number of the wise men. We assume three because it's three gifts. I don't think it was uh, three. I think it was probably more than three or at least two. But we assume because of three gifts. But verses 12 on to verse 23 in chapter 2. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Don't go that way because if you do, they might kill you. Okay? Again, is something like this possible today? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. This happening, even Abimelech, we must confess and must admit, visions 
are not dreams, okay? Visions are not dreams. We don't see evidence of verse 12 or evidence of Genesis 20 verses 1 on to verse 7 within the Pauline epistles. We don't see the evidence of it. Okay? We don't. Personally, do I believe like what happened, like we already looked at? God warning, it's like, hey, you better repent or I'm going to drop you. Someone who is his own. Um, yes, I do believe that is possible. Why? Because someone who is of the church of the living God, you're asleep on your bed, you have the Lord within you. Okay? He's not going anywhere. Okay? Okay? But then again, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. So there's that to take into account. I do believe, like I said, that God can warn you of things that pertain to you personally. Like you're asleep. And it's like you're asleep. Like I, like, we, like I said, I do believe that is possible. Is it probable? Most likely to happen. I don't think so. No. Just like I said, in the Pauline epistles after Acts chapter 2, you don't see it. You don't see it within the Pauline epistles. And we already looked at visions within the Pauline epistles in the context that it was in. So we don't see it within the Pauline epistles, which is for us today, this dispensation. Is it possible? I believe so. Is it probable? Most likely to happen? I don't think so. Brethren, the lost, they have access to the scripture. They have those who prophesy today. Let them hear them. God's not working like he did once before. Okay, let's continue. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a, in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be there, be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. And there was until the death of Herod, and there was, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. So them going down to Egypt was what? In this dream, a fulfillment of what? Prophecy. Fulfilled. Okay? Verse 12, Lord warning them, get out of here or you're going to die. Okay? This fulfillment of prophecy. Okay? Saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth, and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah, uh, did you see verse 17? Yeah. More fulfillment of prophecy. In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping, and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, look at this, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel. For they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose, and took the young child and his mother, and came into Egypt. Again, I have called my son out of Egypt. Fulfilling prophecy. Prophecy fulfilled. Okay? But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod. He was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. He was warned of God, but he turned aside into the parts of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city of Naz city in a city called Nazareth, 
that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Prophecy fulfilled. Prophecy fulfilled. Prophecy fulfilled. Okay? The only one that you can look at is uh, verse 12, told the wise men, don't, don't, don't. Similar to Abimelech in uh, Genesis chapter 20. Okay? Okay? See, now, God has purposes for, his, for these things. Okay? Old Testament prophets are not today. But now let's let's get to a, what all y'all, especially if you're one of these charismatic devils, let's get to the one that you were saying, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. Yeah, let's go. Acts chapter 2, verses 14 on to verse 21. Come on. This was this current dispensation. But what was happening here? Okay, we're, we're going to get into that. Okay, how, many, how much time we got? Okay, we're going to get into this. Let's go. But Peter, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay, they, they spake in tongues, known languages, not devilish, blah, 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 blah. Not that, okay? Uh, <laughs> Uh, verse 12 and 13. Let's read that. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? And others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven, You have blasphemed the Holy Ghost! I've come across some of you charismatics with your devilish tongue talking, and I've told you bluntly shut your mouth and what have you and some of you have said to me I've blasphemed the Holy Ghost and you point to Acts chapter 2 I don't think uh, I don't think that spirit is in you is of the Lord I think it is of that Antichrist but Peter standing up with the eleven lift up his voice and said unto them he men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is, but it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Here, here's where you guys hang to. This is what you cling to. And shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Verse 18. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will shew wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, the sun shall be turned into darkness. These are signs, by the way. Okay? The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See! See! Really? Okay? Now, who, are, who in Acts chapter 2 they were all Jews from verses 1 on to verse 13. Uh, they're all Jews. Uh, Jews that lived in these areas and spake these languages, which the apostles spake known languages. There was not a Gentile amongst them. There was not. Okay? And hence, when you're looking at verse 17, what is he quoting? He is directly quoting... Joel, chapter 2. So let's go there. Let's go there. See, this is what happens. You get these devils coming around, not rightly dividing the word of truth, okay, and taking things out of context, okay? So let's go to Joel. Joel, chapter 2, 
Joel chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 27. Okay? Who is Joel speaking to? Joel, uh, Jews. And this was written under the dispensation of the law. Wasn't it? Yes, it was. But see, here in Acts chapter 2, this is this current dispensation. What was going on here? Let's find out. Joel chapter 2, verses 21 under verse 27. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, Israel, and the fig tree and the vine do yield, uh, yield their strength. Okay, so the fig tree beareth her fruit, and the fig... Uh, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Fruit, fig tree, synonymous with Israel. The vine, he is the vine, okay? Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Did a video about the latter rain thing. Uh, latter rain, former rain is always speaking about the future fulfillment of the children of Israel. It has nothing to do with us today in this dispensation. That is heresy. And that's what them four devils at the beginning of this video bank on. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? Verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore, I will restore to you the, ear, the ears that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and with my people. Okay? So, this is talking about future fulfillment of prophecy. Okay? This is what it's going to be like in the future in the kingdom of heaven and leading into eternity. This has not happened yet. Okay? And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people... Jews, Israel, the Hebrews, shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Is the Lord in the midst of his people today? No, he is not. One second, brethren. Sorry about that, okay? So, verses 21 on to verse 27 are talking about the future fulfillment unto Israel. When the king come back at his second coming and is reigning from Jerusalem. Okay? Prove that to you. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is not in the midst of Israel right now. The Jew is the apple of his eye. Yes, the Jew is his people. Yes, but they are not worshipping the true God of their fathers, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So... Verse 27 shows us what? That I am in the midst of my of Israel. Jesus Christ is not on earth today. Okay? Future fulfillment. Future fulfillment within the kingdom of heaven, which comes after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, let's read verses 28 on to verse 32. Very important. Okay? We had to look at that context. Okay? Talking about future fulfillment. This is talking about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ, before his death, burial, and resurrection, came unto the Hebrew, the Jew, offering them the kingdom of heaven. They rejected that. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that, okay? But let's read verses 28 on to verse 32 now. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. Your sons and your daughters. Speaking to who? Jews. Hebrews. Sign gifts. Okay? Your young men shall see visions. Okay? Let's read that. And it shall come to pass afterward. After what? 
After the kingdom of heaven? Or after the rejection of the kingdom of heaven? At the first. After the rejection. Okay? Let's hold on. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons, Jews, and your daughters, Jews, shall prophesy... Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. These are sign gifts. And also, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And also, uh, within the law, under the law, okay, Gentiles were allotted to be servants unto the Hebrews. And what happened was, us Gentiles were grafted in to the tree of the Jew after Israel rejected both the kingdom of heaven and the gospel. So, dear friend, verse 28, yes, these are talking about sign gifts. Because why? We'll look at that in a second. But then it says, and also upon the servants of who? Your sons and your daughters. Who are who? Hebrews, Jews, Gentiles. Oh, let's continue. And also upon the servants. The servants of who? Your sons and daughters. And upon the handmaidens. In those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Talking about during the time of Jacob's trouble. The blood moon thing. Which that dumb wicked heretic John Hagee, you know. And we've seen blood moons today. You know, the, the red moon thing where the moon looks that big. Really neat looking, okay. But, okay. The sun shall be turned into darkness. And the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Talking about the second coming. Okay. Talking about the second coming, not his first coming. Okay? Which we kind of already looked at. Okay? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now, see, heretics, easy believism heretics like to say calling upon the name of the Lord is only for our Old Testament prophet, uh, Old Testament, and they go to here. Uh, no, this is crossing dispensational lines, you wicked devils, okay? The point is, calling upon the name of the Lord. And these, these devil heretics will say, it says deliverance. Who, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Yes. And while in the book of Romans, chapter 10, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, it's crossing dispensational lines. Okay? You call upon the name of the Lord as his people, he will deliver you. And this here in Joel is written for who? The Jews? Okay? Who will call upon the name of the Lord as his people and he will deliver them? During the time of Jacob's trouble? Once they finally realize, oh, wow, we've messed it up. But today, see, crossing dispensational lines, see. But today, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, Greeks and Gentiles, okay? Gentiles, Greek, Gentile, okay? Non-Jew, non-Hebrew, okay? You call upon the name of the Lord out of fear of him and may the Lord save you. But you be brought about that by being broken and having contrition and then fear of the Lord calling upon his name. It's crossing dispensational lines, you heretics. Okay? See, and it's because of this here in Joel chapter 2, verse 32, that these easy believism heretics will come along and dispute, calling upon the name of the Lord. Because they want to damn as many people as they can to hell. So now go back to Acts chapter 2. Okay? Peter is using this. Yes. Yes. But what is happening here? Okay? What is happening here? Okay? Number one, number one, there were no Gentiles here, okay? Number one, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, what was happening here? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, okay? 
1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, you got a Bible that says are being saved. Like Calvinists, like that disgusting Paul Washer. Oh, that guy makes me sick. But which are saved, sealed, secure. It is the power of God. See, the true the cross, truly going to the cross, means brokenness of your self-righteousness. Those four wicked devils, pompous, self-righteous, wicked devils. Just like the young man from Notre Dame. Pompous, full of themselves. Okay? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Okay? Those four people at the beginning of this video, pompous. The cross is foolishness to them. Oh, they might actually be able to speak the true gospel. But then again, you got to remember, the devil can quote scripture. Because the scripture speaks for itself. Okay? Not only I have addressed that, okay? But let's continue. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. What was, is this wisdom talking about the fear of the Lord? No. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. What is this wisdom refer, referring to? Verse 18. To them that perish foolishness. To the lost, to the world. Okay, so the wisdom in verse 19 is not a reference onto the fear of the Lord because remember, context defines the words, okay? Because our Lord says in Job 28, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So wait a minute, in verse 19, wisdom and understanding, is that the fear of the Lord and departing from evil? No, context. Verse 18, for the pre preaching of the cross is to them that perish, Foolishness, worldly, lost people, okay? So, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, wise in their own minds, lost people, wise in this world, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Not departing from evil, but departing from God, okay? Understanding of the prudent, you know? Their own selves. Let's continue. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the, world, the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom, their own wisdom, that wisdom that Satan is like, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil when you uh, disobey what God has said. Yes, yes. For after the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You looking at verse 22 there? For the Jews require a sign. And in Acts chapter 2, there wasn't a Gentile present. It was all Jews. And the Jews require a sign. Just like Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, Needed a sign. The Lord appeared to him and he saw the Lord. Peter, before he went on to Cornelius, which we will talk about in the next video, okay? Peter needed to have a sign, a vision, to go on to Cornelius. Why? Because the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. Sign gifts is what Joel is talking about. Unto who? The Jews. To show the Jews that, hey, okay, you missed the kingdom of heaven. But here, the gospel. So, you know about Mark 16? They'll speak with new tongues and that kind of stuff, okay? That you got to look at Mark 16 appropriately, okay? One is addressing the sign gifts, but those who believe, who believe not are damned after the sign gifts have gone away, okay? Because the sign gifts, dear friends ended with the apostles. And if there are any signs today, it ain't 
the Lord who's doing it. Because he doesn't work like that anyway. The only sign that was given was the sign of the prophet Jonas. These people, and see, that's what those devils at the beginning of this video are doing. They're giving signs and wonders. And see, that is based off of the premise of replacement theology, which comes from the Vatican. Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Do you see? Do you see? But we preach Christ cru crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and it is, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, this is not Calvinism, okay? You're called when you go to the Lord on his terms and he saves you. Then you are of the called, saved. Okay, anyone can be saved. It's not Calvinism. But the problem is, you've got to, no, the glory is for you who are, reject this, you know, who boot the door out of the way so you can climb up some other way. The problem is for you that you've got to be broken of your self-righteousness and have godly sorrow. Those four devils, there's no, their self-righteousness is up to here. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Uh, verse 12. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Romans chapter 10. Of course, of course you knew. Just, just for you. You knew I had to come here. You knew I had to come here. Romans chapter 10. Verses 14 under verse 17. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Preacher and prophet are two different things, okay? We prophesy today. Old Testament prophets do not exist today. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Sent by whom? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel good news of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by dreams, and hearing by visions, and hearing by signs and wonders. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, the scriptures. These people are lying to you. They are lying to you, okay? So in Acts chapter 2, when Peter is talking about that, okay, the sign gifts, the sign gifts were there for the Jews to confirm the New Testament. That, okay, they missed the kingdom of heaven. Hear the good news, the gospel. And it was confirmed, and it was confirmed unto them by what? By signs. Because the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. The Greek is a Gentile. So in Acts chapter 2, when Peter is quoting Joel chapter 2, uh, verses 28 on to verse 32, he's telling them, look, the sign gifts are here. We are showing you, yes, okay, the gospel, this is the gospel. Christ paid for the sins of everybody. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood. Here are the signs confirmed unto the Jew first. It's, this was this dispensation. But then right here in verse 18, and on my servants and on my handmaidens, 
I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and on my servants, those of this dispensation. While in Joel we saw, and uh, and go back there, and while in Joel, okay, go back to Joel chapter 2, okay, you notice that difference? Joel chapter 2, uh, verse 29, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. And also upon the servants. The servants of what? Your sons and your daughters. But here in Acts chapter 2, he says, and on my servants. Talking about when the Gentiles be grafted into the tree, which didn't happen yet because God did what? God did what? Okay? He's making reference to the sign gifts. The Jews require a sign. The talking in tongues. The healings. Raising of the dead. That kind of stuff. The miraculous signs were for the Jews to confirm unto the Jews. Not for us. Not for us Gentiles. And the sign gifts went away after Acts chapter 7. It was still this dispensation, but it went primarily to the Jew first, just like the kingdom of heaven, to the Jew first. But they rejected the kingdom of heaven, and they rejected the gospel, and then us Gentiles were brought in. And that is what this is signifying, okay? Now, go to John chapter 18. John chapter 18, verses 36 and 37, okay? John chapter 18, verses 36 and 37. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Now, I've talked about this before in other videos with you. What does this mean? His actual physical kingdom is not there. Hence. Because while he was about to go be crucified, okay, the kingdom of heaven, which was offered unto the Jews, prophesied that they would reject it, but he wouldn't be a just fair God if he didn't offer it anyway, right? Okay? He was about to go to the cross. So he says, my kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of Christ Jesus as king on the earth, is not of this world. Not there. Why? Because he's going to the cross. Okay? If my kingdom were of this world, if they had accepted, and yada yada, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Because he had to go pay for sin on the, uh, on the cross and shed his blood, okay? And die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the script, uh, scriptures. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Okay? To bear witness of the truth, that he is God. He was the promised Messiah. But they rejected that. Okay? But they rejected that. And also, um, check this out. In uh, Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verses 35 on to verse 38. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Remember the miracle of the loaves and fishes. Jesus Christ is God the Father. He is God. And as king, he could miraculously provide the fishies, they were coming out of their hands like nothing was there. The bread coming out of the baskets like nothing was there. He was miraculously providing for his people. He as king could do that. But see, they rejected that. They rejected the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Uh, where, are, where are we? Verses 35 on to verse 38. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, like thee anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now... He's going to the cross to die. He that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. 
And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And he's referring to Isaiah chapter 53. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. See, he offered the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. They rejected that. So now, as king, he's not going to be there to supernaturally provide for them, as he would if they had accepted him. Okay? That's why he said in John chapter 18, it's like, my kingdom is not hence. Why? Because they rejected it. It's going to be at his second coming. Okay? That's what he's talking about. All right? So they rejected, they rejected the kingdom of heaven, and now John chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 15. Okay? John chapter 15, or 19, verses 11 on to verse 15. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from, then, and from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king, speaketh against Caesar. See, it was prophesied that he was going to die, and that the Jews were going to reject him. But he had to offer it, or else he wouldn't be a fair and just God. Shall not the, uh, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Okay? And the Jews right here, it's like, hey, he making himself a king, speaking against Caesar. Verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, behold your king. Right here, the rejection of the kingdom of heaven. But they cried out, away with him. Away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? What do they say? The chief priests, the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Right there, the rejection of the kingdom of heaven. Hence, at his second coming, after the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But now, Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 8. Okay? So, they rejected the kingdom of heaven. God ruling over them as king, our Lord Jesus Christ, who could supernaturally provide for them. The dispensation was ending. And we look in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11, on to verse 18. Okay? Okay? Now, Acts chapter 1, verses 4, on to verse 8. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? What does he say? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. See, they were asking about the kingdom to Israel. The kingdom of heaven, no. It's just said, it's not up to you to know. But the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, was about to be offered unto them exclusively at the first. Still in this dispensation. Why? Because the perfect sacrifice had been made, bringing in this dispensation. But the gospel as the kingdom of heaven first went to the Jews. There are not two gospels. There is one gospel. One way of salvation. Okay? But that way of salvation was first offered to the Jews. There are not two gospels. One to the Jew and also one to the, to the Greek. No. No. No, but what changed was the Jews rejecting or accepting. And go to Acts chapter 7. 
Okay? We saw when they rejected the kingdom of heaven. Here's where they reject the kingdom of God. It's the gospel. Acts chapter 7, verses 51 on to verse 60. Stephen goes down through the run the rundown with them on this and stuff. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betray betrayers and murderers, whom I have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it? When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Standing. Now this is where a lot of people get the preeminence or eminence or something like that. Um, at this time, yes, I believe the Lord could have come back uh, had they accepted, but we all know that that wasn't going to happen. But he showed by that, that he saw that, saw the Lord standing Okay, because he was could have come back had the Jews accepted the gospel. I believe that. Okay, of course it's prophesied that it wasn't going to happen, but had they done that, none of this would have been here. But see, that's a moot point because it was prophesied that it was going to go onto a foolish nation, Gentiles. Okay, that's why he was standing. And he said, "Behold, I see the heavens open." and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at, the young, at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He died. Jerusalem, Jews, Hebrews, rejected the gospel. And coincidentally, in Acts chapter 8, you see the first Gentile within this dispensation being saved. That's when the Gentiles were grafted in. Because the Jews, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? Kingdom of heaven to the Jews first. They rejected it. The gospel to the Jew first. They rejected it. Same dispensation. Salvation by grace through faith in this dispensation. Yes. Same way. Yes. But primarily offered on to the Jews first. Then us Gentiles were brought in. And then, they, then it was hammered out in Acts chapter 15. The gospel that we preach today. Okay. That's, they rejected it. That's why we're here. That's why we, the Gentile, are here. Okay? You have to remember, dear, dear people, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Okay? I've got to watch my time. I'm not concerned for your time. These, you have to invest time. Yes. Um, remember, Ephesians chapter 1, I should say. That in this dispensation, when you come to the Lord on his terms, verses 9 on to verse 14 in Ephesians chapter 1. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Put the Calvinism video in the description box for you to watch, okay? And that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, sanctify them through thy truth, Thy word is truth, okay? All right. In whom 
ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away, erroneously referred to as the pre-tribulation, rapture, okay? The redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Once saved, always saved, sealed unto the, to the, uh, sealed until the day of redemption. This seal was not in the Old Testament as it is today, okay? That seal was not there. But it is today. And you got those devils who are not themselves saved trying to take Old Testament thing and apply it to today. Heresy. Heresy. Okay? And Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. You have to study this. You like 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. For this cause... I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote in a few words, what is this mystery? Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages, other dispensations, was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit. What is the mystery? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs grafted in and of the same body and partakers of, this, of his promise in Christ by the gospel. That's the mystery. Okay? And it wasn't revealed in other ages. Okay? They weren't looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Okay? You have to understand that. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. And those four devils are taking Old Testament things and trying to apply them today. Heresy. Heresy. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? And also, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. All right. Um... Verse 16, uh, verse 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. In this dispensation, yes. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. But these people, I know I saw a dream, I know I saw a dream, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure... 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I don't doubt that some of these people have actually seen what they're claiming to have seen. But did it come from the Lord? 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles. Deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostle of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Also, people in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12, And with all the ceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 
And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You want to believe in phony stuff? You want to believe in Christianity, this nonsense that these people are talking to you about? You want to believe a lie? God will send you strong delusion. These false prophets, they haven't seen anything from the Lord, but they have seen something from the God of this world, who is Satan. And you got to remember one verse in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66, just one verse. Come on, fingers. Working against the clock here. <laughs> yes. Uh, verses 3 and 4. He that killeth an ox as if he slew a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways. And their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. So yeah, I, I don't doubt that some of these people have actually seen, heard, and had these visions and had these dreams. It's not from God. These prophetic dreams. Like I said, I, I, I'm I willing to, um, yeah, I, I do think that God can, like with Abimelech, warn you of something like that, yes. But prophecy, prophetic, going against scripture, outside of scripture, that's heresy. No, that will not happen. That cannot happen or else God would be a liar. Okay? Hmm. Jude, Jude, verses 8, hmm. on to verse 16. Here's, after Acts, here's the only uh, reference of the word dream of any form after Acts chapter 2. Likewise, also these Filthy dreamers, filthy dreamers, defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, as brute beasts. In those things, they corrupt themselves, unregenerated, not saved. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers. Complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, 
Remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who would walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, want to be like that, that young man, wants to be set apart. Look at me, I'm special, I'm charismatic, I'm an anointed one, okay? Yes, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, led by their senses, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, on to eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference, others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever. Dear friends, dear friends, be, be very, very cautious of these filthy dreamers. Like I said, I, I do think that the Lord can warn you personally about something that you might be in danger of in a dream. Yes, I do. But this prophetic nonsense that these people, no, not at all. Why? Because that would contradict the scriptures. Absolutely it would. Beware, brethren. Beware, people. Those people, like in the beginning of this video, they're Christians. In league with the Vatican, they're not saved. They're not of the Church of the Living God. They're prophesying to you a thing of their own heart and have seen nothing. They're not rightly dividing the word of truth. They're not saved. They're not prophesying from Scripture. They are prophesying out of their own heart. The devil is their father. They're taking Old Testament things and trying to apply them for today, which is heresy. Run from these people. Okay? Run. That's going to be it for this video. Part two of this video will probably be coming either tomorrow or Thursday. Okay? So, and that one we're going to talk about visions. Thank you to all my brethren. Thank you to all our brethren for your prayers. We love you. Thank you so much for all you have given and done for us and the prayers that you have offered us. Thank you so much. We love you and pray for every single one of you. Thank you. Thank you for those few who seek the Lord through his scriptures, who are valiant for the truth, Thank you. We love you. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.